Got sound there? Good morning and welcome. We thank uh, Dean Perry, who is our organist and pianist this morning, and we also thank Stuart McKinnon, who is our soloist later on this morning. And a sincere welcome to those who are listening through East Link this morning as part of our congregation. And a thank you to those helping with the worship, those operating the cameras, those greeting at the door, and those who will assist in any way with this service. Other announcements are printed in your bulletin. The men's club will gather out by on the lawn at the side door for refreshments after church. And the bulletins today are in loving memory of Duncan and Doris McPhail, presented by Lynn. And happy birthday to Audrey Livingston on August the 3rd. And there's a children's activity area here at the back of the church for any children who are here. Our greeters will be glad to direct you to the cozy chairs and books and puzzles there. All are welcome. Also, there's an announcement there. The Interfaith Refugee Sponsorship Group is looking for a two-bedroom affordable apartment in the Sherrilltown area. A new family is coming, two adults and a 19-month-old boy, and they can stay with relatives for a short period of time, but they are hoping to find a suitable housing for them, and the contact name and numbers are printed in your bulletin. <clears throat> the sympathies of this congregation are extended to Mark and Sandra Richardson on the death of Mark's brother, Peter. Now we will have the lighting of the Christ candle. The light of Christ is here in our midst. 
and we as a congregation so appreciate this opportunity to worship in community. In the lighting of the rainbow candle, honoring the beautiful diversity in our world, each person and expression of love divine, we light the rainbow candle. And we gather to worship, acknowledging the traditional territory in which we stand. We acknowledge that the land of which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the adequate Nikwa First Nations people. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace with its people. Time for quiet preparation for worship. Our introit is the first verse of This is the Day, number 412. to worship is at the bottom of page one in your bulletin. Come from your busy lives into this sacred place. Come away from your worries and responsibilities. Come and gather here in this place of reflection. Our opening prayer is on page two in your bulletin. Let us pray. You, divine one, are our joy. You are the ground of our believing, the spring in our hoping, and the happiness in our loving. You are the reason why we are here and the purpose that will later take us on our journey. Help us to make the most of this time reaching deeply and rising high in bountiful worship. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our opening hymn is found in our Voices United, number 326, O for a thousand tongues to sing.
continuing to worship God with our prayer of confession, which is printed too in your bulletin. In quietness and confidence, we come before you, divine one of grace and love. Your love transforms us. Hear us as we confess to you what lies deepest in our hearts. Friends, Jesus shows us the way to live truly divine people. Jesus invites us to follow, learn, and truly live. Let us turn and follow him, knowing that we are always loved. Now we will remain seated as we sing number 664 in Voices United, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And I welcome the children to gather with me down here. doing hmm? ah, that's good today we're going to talk quite a bit about prayer huh do you fellows pray hmm? yes you do yeah this book was written by Reese 
Reese, where's her name? Reese Lindbergh. And it's an excellent book because she talks about St. Francis Assisi, who was born way back in the 1200s. And he was very interested in all of the world's creation. So he was very devoted to nature, especially to animals and birds. So she wrote this beautiful book, The Circle of Days, from a Cantle of the Sun, which was originally written by St. Francis of Assisi. And if you turn around, you can see the beautiful pictures that go with this. Lord, we offer thanks and praise for the circle of our days. Praise for a radiant brother sun who makes the hours around us run. For sister moon and for the stars, brilliant, precious, always ours. Praise for brother wind and air, serene or cloudy, fell or fair. For sister water, clear and chaste, useful, humble, good to taste. For fire, our brother strong and bright, whose joy illumines the night. Praise for our sister, Mother Earth, who cares for each of us from our birth. For all her children, fierce or mild, for sister, brother, parent, and child. For creatures wild and creatures tame, for hunter, Haunted both the same. For brother sleep and sister death, for tend the brothers of our breath. For desert, orchard, rock and tree, for forest, meadow, mountain, sea. For fruit and flower, plant and bush, for morning robin, evening thrush. For all your gifts of every kind, we offer praise with quiet mind. Be with us, Lord, and guide our ways around the circle of our days. Isn't that a beautiful story? Let us pray. And you could say this after me. Thank you, God, for all our creation. Thank, thank you, God, for family, for home, for shelter, for food, for those who love us. Amen. Thank you very much. Let us begin with a prayer for understanding the scriptures. The divine creator's love is proclaimed throughout the scriptures. The call and challenge shows through on each page. Now may we open ourselves to the word that comes through these words. Give us what we need to be able to become the people we are called to be. Amen. Our first reading is from Colossians. It's Paul's letter to the uh, Colossians, it's from the Message Translation, and so it reads very much like a, a modern-day letter. My counsel to you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. 
You received Christ Jesus, the Master. Now live in him. You're deeply rooted in him. You're well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you've been taught. School's out. Quit studying the subject and start living it. And let your living spill over into thanksgiving. Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in him so you can see and hear God clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without him. When you come to him, the fullness comes together for you too. His power extends over everything. Entering into this fullness is not something you figure out or achieve. It's not a matter of being circumcised or keeping a long list of laws. No, you're already insiders. Not through some secret of initiation rite, but rather through what Christ has already gone through for you, destroying the power of sin. If it's initiation ritual you're after, you've already been through it by submitting to baptism. Going under the water was a burial of your old life. Coming out up, up out of it was a resurrection. God raising you from the dead as he did Christ. When you were stuck in your old sin-dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive, right along with Christ. Think of it. All sins forgiven, the slate wiped clean, the old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants to the, in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. So don't put up with anyone pressuring you in details of diet, worship services, or holy days. All those things are mere shadows cast before what was to come, the substance is Christ. Don't tolerate people who try to run your life, ordering you to bow and scrape, insisting that you join their obsession with angels and that you seek out visions. They're a lot of hot air. That's all they are. They're completely out of touch with the source of life, Christ, who puts us together in one piece, whose very breath and blood flow through us. He is the head, and we are the body. We can grow up healthy in God only as he nourishes us. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 85, and it's on page 802. And Dean is going to play it through twice to give you a chance to find it in your hymn books. It's page 802, Psalm 85. Y'all got the page? Okay, let's all sing it together now. Show us your love and mercy. Once you were gracious to your land, O oh God, we restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave your... the offense of your people and pardoned all their sins. You drew back all your displeasure and turned from your fiery wrath. Restore Don't. us again, God our Savior, and put away your just anger towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you pro prolong your wrath to all generations? Will, Will you, you not, not revive, revive us, us again, again that, that your, your people, people may rejoice, rejoice in, in you? you. Oh, what's your Your love and mercy. 
Let me hear what you will say, O God, for you will speak to your people, to the faithful who tune their hearts to you. Surely salvation is near those who fear you, and your glory will dwell in our land. Mercy and faithfulness will meet justice and peace will embrace. Faithfulness will spring up from the earth and righteousness look down from heaven. You, O oh God, will give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness will go before you and the paths of your feet will be peace. Show us your love, show us your love. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. One day he was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Master, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. So he said, when you pray, say, Father, Revealed who you are, set the world right. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. And then he said, imagine what would happen if you went to a friend in the middle of the night and said, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. An old friend traveling through just showed up, and I don't have a thing on hand. The friend answers from his bed, Don't bother me. The door is locked. My children are all down for the night. I can't get up to give you anything. But let me tell you, even if he won't get up because he's a friend, if you stand your ground, knocking and waking all the neighbors, He'll finally get up and get you whatever you need. Here is what I'm saying. Ask and you will get. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will open. Don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This is not a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in. If your little boy asks for a serving of fish, do not scare him with a live snake on his plate. If your little girl asks for an egg, do not trick her with a spider. As bad as you were, you wouldn't think of such a thing. You're at least decent to your own children. And don't you think the Father who conceived you in love will give the Holy Spirit when you ask him? Hear now what the Spirit is saying to the people. We are so grateful for this time to gather in faith.
For many of us here this morning, this passage from Luke may trouble us. It may sound like if we are persistent in our prayers, they will always be answered. Let me share again the words. For everyone who asks, receives, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Yet how many of us have struggled to believe that our prayers are even being answered. We may pray and pray for something and it does not happen. We may begin to believe that we have not prayed hard enough or long enough. We may feel that we have not been faithful enough and that is the reason our prayers have not been answered. This alone can put our faith into crisis mode. And we may ask questions like, how can I keep up my faith? How can I keep the spirit alive? How can I find energy to continue praying when it seems I am left in the cold to struggle on my own. Some of the things we may have prayed for over the years. We may have prayed that a loved one be healed, but they pass away, they die. We may go for a checkup feeling that maybe the tumor is benign, but the results come back cancer. And we ask ourselves, but I prayed, I asked God, and God did not help me. But our prayers are not always answered in the way we wish. Our Creator always is there for comfort, strength, and guidance to support us through the hard times. When we take time to reflect on the situation, we are empowered to see that we were not alone during that time of triumph or struggle. It is a holy present that grants us grace in the special moments in which we struggle. And it was that same holy presence that gave us time for accepting our lot in life and gave us a renewed time of faith and blessing. Several years ago, when I was the minister at St. Andrews by the Sea, I met with a confirmation class of teenagers, and I spent one session with them talking about prayer. Of course, we discussed the three different kinds of prayer, prayer of confession, where we are sorry for something we might have done, prayers of thanksgiving, the time to express our thanksgiving, and intercessory prayers, which of course is the time in which we raise up other people in our prayers. We spoke about things we were especially thankful for, and one of the children in the confirmation class said on that day when I asked, what are you thankful for? Said, fingers, fingers. Why would they say they were thankful for fingers? Well, the young people had experienced the horror of hearing about a tragedy in a fellow classmate, an accident which took away most of the fingers on that young man's right hand. So that's why their thoughts on that particular day were to be grateful for fingers. 
Like many weeks during our nine-week session with them, these young people, grades 7 to 10, their thoughts were often focused on the things that were happening in their life right now and the things that affected people of their age. Another week, there was the terrible bus accident in Sussex, the one which took four young lives. So they wanted to talk about that, and what, once again it was brought up what they were thankful for. And that they were still reflecting on the previous week, and again they said fingers, but they added to it life. Since then, the brother and sister that were in that same class have lost their father to cancer. And I hope and pray that what they learned in their confirmation class and the support of the people their own age and older people, their family, and their God may have helped them through that terrible tragedy. And come a close third as we talked again about things they were thankful for was very special friends, family, food, and of course, shelter. Many years ago, when I was doing theological studies in Halifax, we were required to do a field placement, and I did mine with the Woodside Infra Royal United Church in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. While there, I led a study group on prayer. And once again, I looked at the three types of prayer that I have mentioned earlier. But the most significant moments in the discussion in that study group were the people's own personal stories. Personal stories of how persistent prayer paid off with healing. Times when it was apparent that prayer had really been answered. But other experiences were when prayer gave people the strength to deal with, to overcome a problem, or the ability to make an important decision, or to be supported during a very tragic time in their lives. We all had our personal stories. And as you can well imagine, at that point I was struggling financially as a student. And just when it seemed that I would be in despair, wondering how we'd pay our rent and if I could put food on the table at the next meal, a wonderful check would arrive and it would all be taken care of. And because I was a candidate from this congregation, quite often that check came from people in this congregation. I especially remember Unit 1, UCW, and the way they supported me. So once again, for me, persistent prayer was answered. Going back to that prayer study group, we talked about the times when the Holy Presence seemed absent from us. We begin to lose faith because we feel we are traveling all alone. Once again, upon reflection, we realized as a group that life does have its ups and downs and sometimes maybe more downs than ups. But God has never left us. That presence remains with us to support our loved ones and friends, to strengthen and uplift them in all the trials of life. I'm sure most of us here this morning can remember a time in our lives when we lost the ability to pray for ourselves. What is happening to us or to someone we love is true, true, truly too traumatic and we are in a faith crisis. This occurred in my family, in our family, on December the 12th, 1998. I had only been ordained for six months, and I was serving in my first pastoral church in Eastern Guysboro. 
less than six months there, when my husband's father, my father-in-law, died quite suddenly. And then two weeks later, my husband Mike took a severe heart attack with extensive damage. For any of you who have lived in the cardiac unit in St. John or Halifax and have experienced something similar, you will remember the horror of the first three days or 72 hours in which the doctor continues to remind you that the patient is not out of danger yet. I don't know what our family would have done if it hadn't been for the numerous people who kept on praying when we were unable to pray. Our faith was in crisis. We had lost the ability to pray. Thank God for persistent prayer. In the gospel that I read earlier, Jesus gives the disciples the short version of the Lord's Prayer. Most of us know it by memory. But it isn't necessary for our prayers to have fancy words. Doesn't matter how or when we pray. We may have used this children's prayer at our parents' knee. My parents taught it to my sister and I. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. I was taught to kneel by my bed with my hands folded thus. But is it really necessary to be so formal? I don't think so. If it is, I'm in trouble. My conversation with our divine creator is often much more informal. A prayer of great thankfulness when something very special happens. A prayer for others when we hear that awful sound of a fire truck or an ambulance. A silent prayer for any tragedy in our world. Or a suddenly panic prayer on behalf of myself. Oh no, God, I need help now. I believe the important part of our prayer life is to continue to keep the lines of communication open. Just don't kneel in prayer when in need, but take time to raise up our prayers of thanksgiving and blessing too. They are so important. A girl and her father were walking along a road when they came across a huge stone. And the girl said to her father, Do you think if I use all my strength, I can move this stone? And her father answered, Yes, if you use all your strength, I'm sure you can do it. The girl tried and tried to move the stone. Discouraged, she finally said to her father, You were wrong, I cannot do it. And the father placed his arm around the girl's shoulder and he said, You didn't use all the resources that were available to you. You didn't ask me to help. Remember, we are limited in our ability to cope, but our divine creator is not limited. Our prayers are heard. We can feel connected when we openly and honestly share our needs, our concerns, and our joys in prayer. We can be empowered. We will not be defeated because God will give us the strength. I end this morning with the great words of the amazing author, Reverend John Pentland. He says, Associating prayer with a do-nothing strategy isn't a fair association with what prayer really is. Prayer is words with legs, some action required. I love that. Prayer is words with legs, some action required. Amen. Let us sing hymn number 
four to one, lead on, O cloud of presence. Our minute for mission this morning is support for women in Africa. Gender inequality has a direct impact on what food is available to families in some African countries. Women often have limited access to land to grow food for their families and credit to pur purchase seeds. Women are also frequently vulnerable to money lenders. A key focus of Mission and Service Partner, the Organization of African Instituted Churches, that's OAIC, the Organization of African Instituted Churches, is supporting women. OAIC is an association of African-founded churches. Its member churches serve a fellowship of over 30 million people across Africa and are largely found in informal urban settlements and in rural areas of Africa. Congregations serve people living on the economic margins. The United Church of Canada supports various OAIC programs, including the Livelihoods Program. This program works with member churches to design and implement responses to hunger and poverty. For example, in Western Kenya, farms are small with rocky soil. Twenty women farmers from the African Africa Divine Church are, or, I'll get it, are organized in a cooperative demonstration farm, planting high-value crops such as vegetables, bananas, and sweet potatoes, intercrop with maize and sorghum. OAIC provides technical support and trains farmers on storing crops and securing markets for surplus produce. The whole community works together 
for food security. Schools have been mobilized to grow food and teach better farming practices. In addition, OAIC has helped the community advocate with local and national governments the resources supporting agriculture. Together with Mission and Service, OAIC communities in Kenya work toward a better future. If Mission and Service is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you have not given, please join us in making Mission and Service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of our mission and service. Amen. Loving God, we now have an opportunity to share what we have with you. May we be generous in what we offer for your work here and throughout our world. Our offering will now be received. God, the grace of giving, with the Spirit large and free, that ourselves and all our living we may offer faithfully. Our offertory prayer is atop of page four. As Christ calls each one of us, your Spirit empowers us. We accept your challenge to be your followers. We will seek to do your will. May you accept all our efforts. Bless these gifts we offer this morning to do your work. Amen. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy One, we come here believing that you walk with us. We give you thanks for the gifts of faith, which give us strength to meet each day as it comes. 
be with all whom we know who are facing difficulties in their lives. Glide them by your Holy Spirit, and may they know that you are with them through it. We pray for those who are ill, for those in, at home or in hospital or in other institutions. In their time of suffering, may they know your presence. May they be strengthened in mind, body, and spirit. Be with those who care for our sick. Equip them with your compassion and endurance. And we pray this morning for those who are grieving. And this morning we raise up in the silence or out loud those that we are each concerned about. Comfort those that we have named. Give them your hope and your abiding love. What may we each remain faithful to our calling as Christian people. Empower us to keep our prayer life active and alive. May we always keep these lines of communication open. And all of these things and the prayers in our hearts we now offer in Christ's name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 426, Savior Again to Your Dear Name.
good courage. Do not be afraid. For our Creator goes with you. You will never be forsaken. Grace, mercy, and peace from the Divine One will remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>